Okay, so things to remember. The books of 2 Chronicles and 2 Kings are where we read a lot about the time leading up to destruction of both the southern kingdom and Yehuda. Those two books also cover the destruction of Yerushalayim by Nebuchadnezzar and the beginning of the Babylonian captivity. Now, Yirmiyah was one of the prophets during the time leading up to the fall of Yerushalayim and the captivity. He tried to warn King uh, Zedekiah, but the king would not listen. Daniah, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were taken into captivity. King Nebuchadnezzar tore up Yerushalayim. He destroyed the temple and burned the houses, but left only the poorest people there in the land as farmers and to look after the vineyards. An empire. An empire, remember, is a lot of land. And King Nebuchadnezzar was the king of the Babylonian Empire, which spread throughout what is called the Middle East. Little Hebrews, they were our Hebrews, our Hebrew ancestors were in Babylon in captivity for 70 years. Okay, let's push on. Let's take a look at the Persian captivity of Yerushalayim. During the time of King Nebuchadnezzar, remember he had a dream, okay? And Yah revealed to Daniyah what the dream was and what it meant. It was a prophetic dream, little Hebrews, about many kingdoms. You remember, little Hebrews, the dream about the great image with the head of gold, um, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, and its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. And you remember that later Daniel himself had a dream about four animals, each representing a kingdom. And so what we have to keep in mind is that these dreams showing that these different kingdoms, we have to always understand that Yah is in control of the rise and of the fall of all kingdoms. Well, let's take a look at the Persian Empire and how, you know, what happened and how they came to rule over the uh, Hebrews. Now, little Hebrews, the Persian Empire was created by a man named Cyrus II, who was also known as Cyrus the Great. Cyrus first conquered a people called the Medes. Okay, so that's where we hear about the Medo-Persia, Medo-Persians. Then, in 547, he defeated the kingdom of um, Lydia, at the Battle of Tyra, and he became the ruler of almost all of what is called Asia Minor in the ancient days. Now today, Asia Minor is what we now call Turkey, all right? Well, soon after Cyrus defeated the con and conquered the Medes, he also defeated the Greek cities that were built on the coast of Turkey. Well, old Cyrus started a rule of letting conquered areas have some freedom to rule themselves as long as they paid him taxes. Okay, so he was after the money. And while the people paid him taxes, he let them have their local religions. And we know that they were worshiping their pagan deities. So the Persians were out there taking over everything. And after Cyrus then came... Cambyses the second who conquered Egypt and once he died Darius or Darius took over then in 480 BC <clears throat> along comes Xerxes who attacked Greece this time the Persians captured Athens you know Athens was that big famous city in <clears throat> in Greece and uh, the Persians came and captured it and they burned up some of their high places however the Greeks had enough of they just had enough of Xerxes and so they killed him in 465 BC now remember little Hebrews I told you that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and so did Dania about these different kingdoms and that Yah tore them all down well, as smart as the Persian Empire seemed to have been, they were beginning to come to an end. But 
not before they ruled over Yisrael. So in 539 BC, the Persians captured rich and powerful Babylon, which put an end to the Babylonian Empire. This means that the Persians now ruled over, guess who? You got it, the Hebrews that were in captivity under Babylon. Now little Hebrews, do you remember I told you that the Persians allowed each part of their empire um, a certain amount of freedom? Well, Cyrus, the king of Persia, allowed the Hebrews to return to their homeland, Yerushalayim, to rebuild the temple. And in 536 B.C., the rebuilding of the temple began. So, although the Hebrews were in captivity, they were allowed to return to Yerushalayim. Now, this punishment was quite different than the one we are on now, because as it is written in Deuteronomy 28 and 68, and Yah shall bring you back to Mitzrayim in ships by way of which I said to you, you are never to see it again. You see, little Hebrews, our people, even though in captivity under Persian rule, they could go back to Yerushalayim, but we can't for 400 years. So, the Samaritans were there in Yerushalayim, okay? And they offered to help with the rebuilding of the temple. But Zerubbabel, the leader of the, of the, of the Hebrews of the, or the Israelites, refused to let them help. So, the work soon stopped because of fighting and bullying from the Samaritans who were angry because they could not help rebuild the temple. Well, little Hebrews, so much was going on during these times. The prophet Zechariah and Haggai <laughs> encouraged the people to continue rebuilding the temple. Little Hebrews, you remember Esther and how she risked her life to make sure our people, the Hebrews, were not completely wiped out. Well, then Ezra led another group of Hebrews to Yerushalayim, and he found out that some Hebrews had married non-Hebrews, and he made the men separate from their non-Hebrew wives. We also had Nehemiah leading more Hebrews to Yerushalayim to rebuild the walls of Yerushalayim. And then there was Malachi. That was the prophet, the messenger, who was speaking Yah's truth about the defiled sacrifices that the people were bringing to Yah and how our people were not esteeming Yah. Our people had made a real mess of things, little Hebrews, and Yah was punishing because of our wickedness. Uh, so then Alexander the Great comes on the scene. And what happens to Yerushalayim? And what happens to, Yer to Yisrael from there, we'll have to see next Shabbat. And with that, little Hebrews, that is our lesson today. And I bid you Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Not accidents on purpose, just starting to scratch the surface, worthwhile and far from worthless. Hebrews, we got a purpose, not accidents on purpose, just starting to scratch the surface. We set apart him on this worldly circus. Israel, we got a purpose, not accidents on purpose, just starting to scratch the surface, worthwhile circus. Stop, stop.